Hello and welcome to our monthly melt of September 2021. Uh, this is the segment where we talk about our uh, crowdfunding games of yep. the month. And uh, we each have three. I'll let Doug start off since he's pulled up his first. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to start with is uh, Beware of Bears, a card game for the bold and brave. Okay. And that's by Boss Dog Games. Uh, who they've had one other game, um, which was also crowdsourced, and that was Farting Frenchies, okay. which was a game about uh, bulldogs hmm. and farting. Makes sense. So, That's what they do. Yep. Uh, this game ends on October 20th, okay. 2021. <clears throat> and so Beware Bears is um, a fast-paced card game. Where you fight to sabotage and eliminate each other um, while watching out for bears. Uh-huh. Um, so <clears throat> you want to defeat your friends and make your path to victory to victory uh, before you end up in the bear's stomach. Okay. Uh, the more you progress through the game, the crazier it gets. Uh, there's lava, evil squirrels, uh, donuts. And, of course, bears. Uh, It's strategic, family-friendly, fast-paced, and it takes between 20 and 30 minutes. So, um, there are forest cards, and then there's cards that have, uh, again, squirrels and donuts and things like that. Um, So, you you have... uh, Five cards in your hand okay. and two forest cards is, is what you start. And the forest cards are placed down in front of each player. Uh, some forest cards have scenery. Um, some have scenery from national parks. And uh, others have bears. You can see where this goes. Small trend. Um, so... Opponents will challenge you uh, with flip and action cards that uh, will keep you on your toes on what you need to do. Uh, They'll also sneak in forest cards where they'll secretly sabotage you with bears. I was going to say donuts this time. (laughs) Uh, And there's action cards which let you peek at cards, flip cards. Um... There's a card where you can have a good old bear stare down. What bears are known for doing. Yep. Uh, There's cards that diffuse uh, what's going on. Um, So uh, each turn, uh, you'll play two cards, placing a card in your forest. Uh, You'll place a card in someone else's forest, play an action card, or discard a card. And... The way you win the game is uh, you make a path to victory by being the first person to connect eight path cards or uh, by sabotaging your friends with bears and be the last man standing. Okay. So it's a, a little bit of a take that. Um, what what drew me to the game, again, is card game. Um, I like, really, it's, it's the, the 20 to 30 minute card game. Mm-hmm. Is what draws me. Um, I tend to like those filler 20 to 30 minute games. Um, and I, I just uh, I thought the artwork was kind of cool. Um, now, do you know how much it's uh, retail, well, not retailing, uh, funding for? Uh, I can tell you that in a second. Maybe. If you hit uh, right here. Uh, $20. That's not bad for... Uh... Get you the base game. Um, and it, it's funny. It lists uh, what you get. And then one of the things... And this is right up your alley. Okay. It says, in a game box. Ooh. I, I, I always said <laughs> a game should make one of the stretch goals box. It should be your very last goal. <laughs> and if it doesn't hit it, it just gets shipped in a bag. Yep. So this one actually lists that you get it in a box. Yep. Um... So then for $35, you get the National Park expansion with it. Okay. Um, or 
There's another thirty-five dollar pledge where you get the Scout expansion. Okay. Um, there, there's a couple different levels, and then I believe. So what's their top tier? Well, I'm not gonna say top tier. Like, what's their all in? Like, because some of them have like, oh, you're in the game, and it's like a ridiculous amount. Uh, so there's 149. Okay. Uh, well, that one's over, I believe, because that was an early bird special. <clears throat> a 99. Okay. That was an early bird special. Early bird special. Hold on. Find the non-early bird special. <clears throat> so f- the early bird special? Yeah. It should be called early bear for this game. Those really- are all gone. So right now, so uh, yeah, 149 okay. gets you uh, the KSE Collector's Edition. Gets you two of the base so game. Kickstarter edition. Yeah. Two of the base game, two of the... Scout expansion packs, two of the National Park expansion packs, one custom selfie bear card. Okay. Uh, two sets of six limited edition KSE bear action cards, one engraved, autographed, and numbered wooden collector's box. Ooh. One KSE BOB Lost Bear plushie. But autographed by who? Probably the designer. Okay. Um, that was like just a bear print. They do have a retailer bundle. Okay. Uh, so there's a bunch. Again, it, it fits that that short card game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, like I said, I tend to seem to like those now. I'm not the... though. Every once in a while, I'm okay sitting down playing like a three-hour game. Uh, <laughs> but I, I've become more geared towards the, the short card game. So, again, that's uh, Beware of Bears from Boss Dog Games, ending October 20th, somewhere around there. If my math uh, was right, uh, October 20th, 2021. Uh, if you backed uh, their previous game, or you've played it, or if you were able to play a uh, uh, a version of Beware of Bears, maybe if you were at Gen Con and, and they were there and had a, a pre-sale edition, I forget what the word I'm actually looking for, uh, let us know. Uh, I guess since you went with a small game, I'll go with my smallest game on the list first. And that is Unsurmountable. It is a solo game made by uh, Button Shy, or being put out by Button Shy. Which we enjoy uh, their stuff. Uh, well, we'll get to that when we get to our games played this month, because we did play a... Well, we enjoy most, most of their the stuff. Well, even the game that we played wasn't bad. No. R- rule books are hit or miss for the yes. best company. Uh, but they have a series of solo games, and this is part of their Simply Solo series. Okay. Which is fun to say. Uh, it will end today, September 25th, in about 10 hours. It has funded. And it's a, it's a solo game, as I said, about climbing a mountain. Uh, you have a... a deck of 18 cards and then throughout the cards each one has a little trail and like a, a post like a sign you know tell you what you do next like you know dead end or like continue forward or play two cards or get rid of another card the key is to keep going until you reach the top of the mountain which comes at a random point when certain things are met it's, it's very hard to describe this game because there's only 18 cards and like the rules kind of keep changing yeah to make a play, so it's, it's, it's a very hard game to describe. It's a very quick game because once again, you're playing by yourself. Yeah. It's it's a puzzle. It's a more puzzly game. It's kind of like a what's the one? Sprawlopolis. Yeah, Sprawlopolis, but mountain. Then I I'd enjoy this because I love Sprawlopolis. Uh, you know, their Kickstarter right now. You can also back the other solo series games they have out there. I think their top tier is, well, I'm not going to count their top, top tier, which is $72 if you want 12 copies of the game. That's for a retailer. Yeah. Uh, But the top tier that you can back at right now is $50. That gets you their newest game from the Sympathy Solo series, which is Unsurmountable. Their past ones, which is Food Chain Island. Yeah. And Ugly Griffin Inn. It gets you all the expansions from all three of them. Okay. Uh, Two expansions for the new Mountain one. Five expansions for the Food Chain Island, and four, yeah, four for Ugly Griffin Inn. Uh, 
they're a solo series game, simply solo series game. Okay. Are highly rated amongst all their bunch of child games. Um, for a good reason, because it's a game that you can carry with you and play by yourself. Yeah. Real quickly. Um, but like I said, that game ends in well, not game that the the backing ends in ten hours today. So by the time you see this, it'll already end it. But like most fundraising things, you can always join in later through late pledges or yeah. whatnot. And I think just the base copy, like if you just want this game, the back is ten dollars. You know, not bad okay. for a ten dollar game. Now the the guy who designed this, uh, he he's done other what some of the other ones that he's done. I think the showed there. He had like fifty other created on here. Oh the. Well, no, that's the person oh, from that, Button Shot. From Button Shot, okay. Uh, the person that actually created this, the Scott Alms. Oh, Scott Alms. Yeah, has yeah. done a bunch of other games. Um, uh, Sorcerer City yep. is one I believe he did that we enjoy. I think he does one other game in the Simply Solo game series okay. as well. But, uh, yeah, you know, good quality game. Really worried about the role. <laughs> Why? But, but uh, you know... It could be hit or miss. Their their solo games, I think, are better made rule wise, because it's one. It's not explaining turns. It's explaining the mechanics. Yeah. Which I think they'll have a better chance at this point. But yeah, uh, I believe Scott Alms has made a couple. Uh, no, this, that isn't Scott Alms. That's not. No. It's a different Scott Alms. Well, I mean, there can be multiple people named Scott Alms. Well, that's not Scott. Almes, A L M E S. Yeah. So he has done. So those are the only ones he's done. Food Chain Island, Ugly Griffin Inn. All right. So he's done the other two from the the Sol Simply Solo. But he's been part of Best Treehouse Ever. Okay, we played. It's an okay game. Uh, boom! The Boomerang Claim. Okay. Which I've heard a really good two player one. Uh, sorry, I want to. Just want to look this up because I want to. You could just type in the game that you're thinking he's part of and see if he was part of it. I mean, he's part of a, the Tiny Epic series. Okay. He did a bunch of those. At really least part of them. I mean, I guess if your wheelhouse is small. So, yes, he's, that, he's not the guy who did... Uh, Sorcerer City? Yeah. Okay. But, uh... Sorcerer City. What, so, this is what you get with us. Everything on the fly. Well, if we thought he was part of it. Uh, that was Scott Caputo who did Sorcerer City. Okay. Different person. Yeah. At least as far as they know. They are two different people to themselves. As far as they could. But yeah, that's my first <laughs> Kickstarter on Surmountable. Uh, like I said, it's going to end today. So by the time this comes out, you would have missed the time. But there's always late backing. Yep. So. All right. My second one is not a game. I can be like Tim. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> um, but it is game adjacent. And that is the Meeple Light. Ooh. Uh, it, uh, it's a giant meeple with 19 dramatic color patterns to choose from. Okay. Uh, or 20 static color options. Uh, multiple lighting patterns and static colors are easily chosen when attached uh, to a three button USB controller. Okay. Uh, it comes with a tree attachment so you can put it on top of your Christmas tree. Uh, so we're getting this for the church is what you're saying? That would be awesome. <laughs> so there's the twenty dollar pledge. Okay. Uh, and by the way, this ends October fourth, twenty twenty one. If I didn't mention that, so the lightless pledge at twenty dollars uh, has no light and it comes in a solid color. Okay. So it's literally just a large meeple. Okay. That's a color. Uh, you can pick red, yellow, blue, green are the standard options. With more colors become available through stretch goals. Um, then there's the $36 pledge, okay. which you get two lightless meeples. 
So those yeah. are the two stack ones, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, for 49, that is uh, the Meeple Light and comes with a tree topper attachment. So $49, you can get the one that changes. That, well, that lights up. Well, they all light up. No, the other two didn't. Oh, they're just a plain color. Okay. But they're not a light then. Yes. Yeah, the first two are not lights. Okay. So $49, you get the Meeple Light. Okay. Um, $64, you get the Meeple Light and uh, one lightless. $72, you get um, four lightless ones. Okay. $79, you get uh, the Meeple Light Tree Topper, six ornaments, a chit biggie, which I'm not sure what that is. Sure, I have to beep that out. <laughs> well, it's a, oh. Chip minis and a meeple key hit. It's a it's a big chip. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to me, you know, I I'd want the one that lights up. So that's fifty dollars. Yeah, actually, I I think I would add if if I would back this, uh -huh. um, I would do the sixty four dollar one. Where you get one of each. One of each. Okay. Um, because the static one would be cool on a shelf, okay. and the one that lights up would be cool on top of. The Christmas tree, or uh, just to have lit up. Yeah. I mean, because you can get red, green, blue, orange, deep yellow, pink, purple, brown, violet blue, dark blue, light blue. So the color ones don't, don't change. You got to pick a color. Yes. And you get red, green, and blue. And no, but the, some stretch room. But the light ones, they don't change. The light ones will change. Okay. Yeah. That, that's where I got to go. Yeah. Crazy. So. Scion, light green, yellowish green, yellow green, white, green white, ivory, pink white, and warm white. And then there are uh, 18 different patterns that it'll change. Yeah. I just think it's cool. Yeah, it'd be fun for a background for these videos. Even the non-light up one. Yeah, and for $72, you can get four of the lightless ones. Yeah. Um, you know, $20 for the, the, the light up one. Um, or the lightless one where it doesn't light up, yeah. No, the and one? they're seven inches tall, okay. So, okay. um, I just think it looks pretty cool. I and mean, you can plug it into your computer and it, it would light, yeah. Um, so again, that's the uh, Meeple Light ending October 4th, 2021 by 8 Bit Builder. This is their first, uh, uh, a fundraiser, a uh, crowd raising. Yeah. Now, has it successfully already funded? Uh, yes. Okay. They were asking for three thousand, and it's at sixteen thousand. Okay. So it has funded, and I believe Beware of Bears, my previous one, has also funded. Oh, speaking about total funding, our last month when I did uh the uh. Avatar RPG, and you said, wow, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Apparently, they're like the fourth most Kickstarter game hmm. overall, which, you know, is impressive considering it was just a book. Yeah. You know, the things that beat it were like Kingdom Death Monster yeah. and like both the Haven Frost and the the one before that, Gloomhaven. Yeah. <clears throat> so Frost Haven and Gloomhaven. Yeah. So anything with plastic beat it. So it was the first like non-massive <laughs> thing. Um, but anyways, getting back to the topic here, my number two, well, it's not number two, but ranking these, yeah. my second Kickstarter this month, well, or crowd number two Kickstarter, yeah, or crowdfunder of the month, uh, well, all my are Kickstarters, so, this month, is, uh, Artins, art, yeah, Artisans, Artisans, I was going to say Artisans, Artisans of Splendid Vale, it is by Renegade Games, this game has backed. We like a lot of Renegade stuff. Well, this is under their Renegade exclusive series. Okay. Uh, so it will not be in stores. If you want this, you have to go through this. It's the only time it's going to be available. Uh, it's got 14 days to go. So end October 8th at 7 p.m. Uh, you can tell it's an expensive game because they've only had a thousand backers right now. And they're at a pledge of a hundred and ten thousand dollars. It's not a cheap game. What what is the the pledge? Level? Uh, base level, 
if you want just the base game, it's a hundred dollars. Oh, well, I can't say anything. Um, but for this hundred, well, yeah, I'll just say what you get for the hundred dollars because that will make explain the game yeah. easier. Uh, for the hundred dollars, you get four character books. Each book has over two hundred and seventy pages currently, so you're buying a set of books. Uh, character boxes, which will contain individual character decks, character meeples, character uh, uh, equipment cards central to your characters, uh, character sheets, individual sheets, uh, dials, 64 meeples screen printed currently, a action scenario book that has 70 pages, uh, 12 engraved unique dice a uh, large box inside your box to hold all 217 cards that come with this game you gotta love boxes and boxes yep a foldable adventure log world map it, it's like a map that you go cross country with yeah. not like a board a component box which contains you know terrain tokens and other little things and that's all that comes in the base game. I don't think there's a non-base game. Uh, is there? Let's see what the highest pledge is. The highest pledge is $180. That's all in. That comes with the core game. And it also comes with all the stretch goals. Uh, plushies. Three plushies. So is this a... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Because it comes with a recharge pack. Um, legacy game. Sort of. Um, this game, the best way to describe it is it's like uh, what was that plat hat game that had the adventure book with the sleeping child? No, uh, was that no, that wasn't plat hat, that was Red Raven. Um, no, plat hat. No. Stuff fables. Yes. It's, Is that Flat it's, Hat? Yes, Flat Are Hat. Are you sure? Yes. I, I know what games I made by you're wrong. Uh, it's like Stuff Fables that is played on a book that, you know, each page has maps and uh, scenarios on them. Okay, I don't like you. Because I was right. <laughs> yep. Yes, I know. Uh, but it's also a mixture between an adventure book and the one game where it's choose your own adventure. Yeah. Because each of the 270 page books are choose your own adventures, but you're playing them at the same time. So one person would be like, I decided to do this. And it'd be like, everybody turn to this page. And then you act out your little thing like, oh, so and so is a jerk. I shove him. Or, oh, let's get so and so. Yeah. So it's choose your own adventure, adventure books on top of an adventure book, book map. Yeah, it's very confusing. <laughs> um, I've watched them explain it. All right. uh, they said there might be more books getting unlocked to okay. it. And I'm assuming the recharge pack does make it a a uh, legacy, legacy type game game because that's where you get recharge packs. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm assuming there's stuff that changes in here. Um. I guess if you pick different things, it will affect you, like because it is a choose your own adventure. Yeah. It, it looked fascinating. I remember looking at this and thinking, "Man, this is something I want back." And I looked at the price. I'm like, "That's a hundred bucks for a choose your own adventure book." Well, so the gentleman that designed this game, okay, uh, Nikki Valens. Sorry if you're watching this. It could be Nikki. A uh, no, it's uh, okay. So yeah. Well, Nikki. maybe. Looking for pronoun? Yeah. So, yeah, Nikki Valens, uh, designer of Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. Okay. Legacy of Dragon Holt, Eldritch Horror, okay. Quirky Circuits. Okay. There's a, a history of good games there. I mean, it, it does look fun. Like I, I like I said, I was thinking about backing, and then I saw the press, and I'm like, that's a lot for a Choose Your Own Adventure game. It's like, if I really want to choose your own adventure that bad, I'm sure I can go to the library and find old Choose Your Own Adventure books. Yeah. And just sit down and read them and be like, I walk into the cave. Oh, I 
died. Well, that was fun. But uh, yeah, the quality looks fantastic. Well, I mean, it should for that kind of money. Uh, but it's it's a trend that I'm seeing with more and more games. Uh, you know, because this is now part of the Renegade exclusive line where they're making games that won't yeah. be in stores. It will be here in secondary markets. So, I don't know. I don't know if I, that's the trend I care for. Where games will only be available here. If you, if you miss out, well, too bad on you. Uh, unfortunately, I think you're going to see more and more of that. Um... I mean, I get it. It's a, it's a big project. Yeah. And I can't see them mass, not mass producing it, but producing it to where it's just going to sit on a shelf. Like, at our local favorite uh, game shop, like, I can't imagine Tom buying this, the owner, and saying, hopefully someone will buy this and have it sitting on the shelf. Because that's a large investment on his part at that point. Yeah. So I get it. So, Miss Valens, I'm sorry. See? Told yes. you that's a woman's name as well. Yes. I just was going off the first name. Yep. Um, but you've created some amazing games. Yep. So that that was uh, my second game of the month. Uh, Artisans of Splendid Valley. Or not Valley. Uh, vale. Vale. Just seems like it should be called Valley, but... Yep, and that's from that goes until October eighth of this year. Uh, up next, we have Doug's sec our last Kickstarter. Yep. Uh, my final Kickstarter or crowdsource game today is Masters of the Universe, the board game uh, Clash for Eternia. Okay. Um, it's a competitive one versus many or fully cooperative action driven board game. Uh, you play to play as the, or you choose to play as the heroes or the villains. Uh, there are unique abilities for each person. Uh, you upgrade your skills, and you fight to to uh, win for Eternia. So, I'm assuming, and I guess I shouldn't assume, but I'm, I'm guessing many of you have already seen tons about this game uh, because it is a Simon game. And um, again, if you're, you're watching our channel, you're, you're probably uh, versed in the many CMON games and what they, they come out with. It does end October 1st. And I am really uh, on the fence on whether I'm going to back this or not. Okay. I love Masters of the Universe. It's my favorite cartoon from when I was little. And the thing that gets me, and I know $110 price point for the base game is nothing for board games nowadays. Uh, but for for me, that 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 is a lot. Uh, I, I haven't spent more. I probably never spent more than $50 on a, a game. And in fact, I think the last game I bought here was the most expensive game I've ever bought. And that was $42. Uh, would have been 50 some, but I got the discount. <laughs> so I just I have a hard time spending a lot of money. Even though I know $110, you get a lot of gameplay. There's gobs and gobs of plastic minis. Um, you know. Is that what a herd of minis is called a gob? <laughs> yeah. Uh, You know, so you get the base for, for 110, you get the base game with the stretch goals where they add um, other heroes like Buzz Off and uh, Mech Neck, uh, Moss Man, and a bunch of other ones. And they add uh, villains like uh, Spike or and Clawful and Faker, uh, Blast Attack. So for, for $110, you get the, the base game. You get the, the stretch goals, and you get the Kickstarter exclusive uh, Faker. Uh, you can also get Battle Cat, Panther, um, a bunch of other 3D tokens and boulders. Um, K 
King Randor, Prince Adam, uh, Queen Marlena, uh, Terror Claw, Skeletor. You know, and that that's all the the stretch goals. So for one hundred ten dollars, you do get a lot. Uh, the two hundred twenty dollar level, you get um, the expand. You get the base game plus the expansion, uh, Assault on Castle Grayskull, and you get Castle Grayskull. Plus all the other uh, rewards that come with it. So all those other uh, stretch goals or minis or whatever whatever, whatever they're calling it. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you wouldn't want the expansion and you just wanted the Pla Castle Grayskull, you'd add that for 75. Mm -hmm. If you didn't want Castle Grayskull and you wanted the expansion, you could add that for 50. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you go all in for the 220 and you can add a Shearer expansion for 50 bucks. You can add a play mat for 35. You can add a 3D ruin set for 25. A nature, 3D nature set for 20. 3D rock set for 15. And marble dice for 12. And it, what we figured, came out to like $370-some if you no, went. it was like four something. Four seventy nine. Uh, all in, it's really expensive. But, you know, if you can do it and you love it, go for it. Um, I, I think, um, uh, it, it'll, it'll be awesome, you know, getting to play as He-Man or Tila, Man-at-Arms, Ram-Man, mm -hmm. or, you know, the other, on the other side, you got Triclops and Skeletor, uh, Evil-In, Beast-Man, Trap-Jaw, Merman, I mean, Now, was Man of Many Faces a bad guy or a good guy? I can't remember. Um... Uh, you remember him? Yeah. At the face. I know. Oh, uh, man. Triclops was the, the bad guy. I want to say Man of Many Faces was, was a good guy, but don't quote me on that. It was a long time ago. That was like 35 years ago. You should remember it perfectly. Uh, but there, there's a lot you get with this. The artwork uh, looks awesome. There, there is just so much. I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, this really tugs at the, not heartstrings, but tugs at the nostalgia. I was gonna say like liver strings. <laughs> yeah, the nostalgia of uh, those of us in our our early forties, and game looks awesome. Artwork looks cool. Minis look cool. Um, and, and again, the, the price point is right where it should be. Mm -hmm. He said that it has a solo variant, right? I believe there is a solo variant. Because games this big, I always think, would be more fun as a solo variant where you're not having to worry about how somebody else plays to ruin your experience. And maybe, I, I don't know if I saw solo. I know there's cooperative. But at the top, we should say, like, blank out of many players. Well, it's... It's cooperative, or it's competitive one versus many, or cooperative action driven. It doesn't say solo. Hmm. <clears throat> um, but man, if, and if you can paint this, that would be really cool. Uh, so, uh, again, man, I, I just, I, I looked through this, uh, and, and everything they've unlocked. Is, is just absolutely incredible and the optional buy-ins is, is is really cool so leave in the comments what you think of the the master of the universe clash for eternia um i, I know it's not much a review of it this was more of a uh, most people have probably seen it um and I, i've watched a playthrough which just it looks cool that you're able to upgrade people. Uh, again, for me, it, it falls out of the realm of what I normally spend. But so once uh, there's so much Kickstarter exclusive, yeah. again, that fear of missing out, will that, that drive me to, to this? I don't know. You just have to wait and see. 
uh, I'm fighting back and forth. I know if, if I had a, a good brother, that, that Cor- would correction, a rich brother, uh, that, that would, uh, be a great Christmas present for next year. Yeah. <laughs> so master of the universe clash for Eternia. And my final Kickstarter for this list, well, not this list for this, uh, part of the video is the spill. Speaking of plastic, uh, this game deals with oil, which oil makes plastic. Uh, it is a reverse tower defense game. It is about a oil rig in the the golf okay. rupturing, and you know polluting the water with oil going everywhere, which we had you know about two decades ago with the Valdez. Well, that was an oil tanker, but in the the Gulf of Mexico they have had. I thought that was a pipe that broke. No, it wasn't a tanker. Yeah, but there was it was a tanker. Mm. For some reason I thought it was a pipe. Uh, but it, it, it's from Smirk and Dagger slash Smirk and Laughter. Well, this is Smirk and Dagger. Yeah. Well, it's the same company. Yeah. It? But it's under their Smirk and Dagger line. Uh, it, it's, if you ever played Castle Panic, the board is set up in the same way with a giant circle and rings going outwards. In the middle sits a, an oil, a plastic oil rig that's a 3D dice drop tray. They drop your uh, oil dice in and it falls down to a quarter box and then depending where those dice land is where your oil spills out of and you have to try to contain the oil from reaching the far edges from killing wildlife and uh, it has a very wide replayability because it comes with a stack of different winning conditions yeah. so it always changes that way uh, but the, it's always the same way to lose is if nine of the marine life die. So you're const or not nine marine life, or I think if you lose like six sections of the board to overflow. In general, uh, this game has a deluxe version and a non-deluxe version. The difference between the two are the tiles that the animals are on. The deluxe version they are on wooden tiles. Okay. Uh, it goes for fifty dollars, which is a reasonable price for a game. And the deluxe version with the wind tiles is sixty dollars. Okay. Uh, both of them come with all the stretch goals, so really depends if you want to spend an extra ten dollars for wind tokens. Yeah. Um, there is a play map for twenty that you can add on, which is tempting because it would be constantly beaten down yeah. with dice. Um, they've unlocked many stretch goals like uh, unique uh, ship pieces, uh, player powers. Probably pass all that on my screen. Here we go. Yeah, it comes with unique ship tokens, uh, weather effects, uh, character cards with unique powers now. Uh, one of the big last things they've upgraded, well, unlocked is stickers for your oil rig to make it look more oil riggish, I guess is the term. Yeah. Uh, a couple of new characters, uh, pearlized dice, which look very nice. Uh, it ends in four hours from now and this is the game out of all three of the games i've talked about that i'm the most tempted to back because it's a, a i'm not gonna say it's a theme i like and not many oil spilling yeah so it's four hours from the day we're filming um so september 24th yeah so it by the time you see this it'll be passed but you can probably late pledge yeah um because as doug knows one of the fun games we play is what rescue polar bear data yeah, temperature, temperature. Yeah. and then another game is uh, hot shots yeah I, I like games about disasters they're just fun um so this this would easily make it into our disaster set of games and like i said uh smirk and dagger makes a lot of fun games that we played before yeah uh one was what like emergency rush something or, like that. Uh, paramedics clear, clear. that's yeah. smirk and laughter yeah that was a very fun game you know, I'm sure we played one or two other games yeah. of theirs. Very good company. Uh, they have reached their goal, so it is going to happen. And this is uh, by a first-time designer. Yep. Um, so, but it's a it's a unique concept of a game because most tower defense games is you're in the center, everything's surrounding you. Yeah. Where this is, the problem's in the center, and you're surrounding it. Yeah, I... You know, just looking at it, listening to it, I think it sounds really cool. It it does sound like a game that um, is right up our alley. 
I mean, I, I, I love Castle Panic because at the end of the year, I've been guilted into making my top 100 games. And that made my list. Oh, are we going 100? I thought we were doing 50. Well, I, I, I made my list of 100. Okay, so, so we'll do a top 100. There um, you go. And I remember Castle Panic being on Kickstarter a couple months ago. The, uh, the like, look. Yeah, the huge deluxe thing. And I really debated getting it because it is a game that I super enjoyed, but I decided I'm never going to, because it came in like a chest this big. Yeah. I'm like, I am never going to pull this out or have a place to store it. And I'm just fine with the base version of that game. Yeah. I don't need all the other things. We're not completionist. We're not, you know, deluxe. We're not even finishes. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just walk away from a game turn three. Yeah. Uh, but it, it is a We're definitely not perfectionist. No, you can tell by our videos. Uh, but it's the spill. Uh, check it out online. Yeah, and, and uh, again, if if you're backing any of the these games, these games, uh, put them down in the comments uh, or any games that you are backing or are there games that are on uh, any of the crowdsourcing uh, sources that we should check out. Uh, that you think we need to take a look at that we we missed. I know we can't ca cover everything. Tim just pulled up one here on his computer that I really consider talking about. It has 221 unique dogs. I didn't know there was that many so dogs. Dog Park, uh, a game about walking dogs. That that almost made my list. Is that what this is about? Yes. I didn't know. It's a board game about walking dogs. I thought it was about kenneling. Um, but I decided to put the meeple light on just because... Uh, want to be something different, um, and we, we try not to always hit the huge ones, the huge games that everybody else covers in depth. Uh, we know I know we don't really cover things in depth. Uh, we just sort of talk about them. We are just two guys talking about games. Uh, we ramble about things. Yes, we ramble <laughs> a lot. Uh, but that's why you come here. It comes with a box sleeve. You know right. I love a box sleeve. And if it's a uh, UV... Spotted box sleeve? Yeah, then you're really about it. Forget about it. But, again, tell us what you're backing. Tell us what we missed. Um, tell us what you think about the games we talked about. Yep. We do thank you for watching. And, as always, hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Ring the bell. Share the video. That does help. Yep. Um, watch the rest of this monthly melt. Uh, the rest of the section should be coming out. Yep. Or, if you're patient, you can watch it all in one giant video, which is the way to do it. <laughs> Put it on the two times the speed. You have it in the background while yeah. doing other things. Uh, but again, thank you for watching. As always, goodbye. All right. We, we really need to catch your exit. Like, we melting your brain, <laughs> not in your head. Yep. We melt your brain. We... As always, we're bittersweet. <laughs>